Psalm 32, verse 11. It says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. I'm talking about tonight uh, the subject of joy. So, and let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you'd be with us. Lord, please help me as I preach. Please give me your strength and your power. Dear Lord, please help me, dear Lord, as I share what you've laid on my heart for, uh, for us this evening. Lord, take what is said, dear Lord, and help us, dear Lord, encourage our hearts, dear Lord, to, to have a desire to have joy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Talk about different things, four different things that produce joy in, uh, in, our, uh, in Christians' lives. It seems like, I think we've all come across those people uh, all too often. That you know they don't. It just doesn't seem like they have any joy in their life. You know they 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 tell you they can tell you when they're saved, and you know and I. Uh, but you know it's one of those things. Is I guess they can tell. Good thing they tell you because you couldn't really see it in their lives. You know they don't. They're not joyful. They're. Uh, I remember back as a kid. What do you say? The preacher say. They looked like they something about oatmeal. They were sucked oatmeal through a exhaust pipe or something, and and he's like, because basically like, oh, they walk around with a sour face, and it's like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, you know what, you know, where you got that, or did you see somebody that once upon a time did that? I don't know, you know, it's like, it's one of those things you, you start envisioning, and it's like. I don't even know how that's possible, and uh, but but the fact that that uh, basically the, the idea they had a sour face on there, and it was down in Florida, so it's like uh, you know, so who, people down south they have a little bit different vernac would be vernacular down there, and uh, but the thing is, uh, I, whether that's possible or not, which I doubt it is, I think we all get the idea of what what he was talking about. He, you know, they they just. They had, they had no joy in their face. They had no joy in their lives. But we as Christians, there's no need for us to be uh, to have live a life that has that doesn't have joy in it. In fact, we're, we uh, we we should have joy if we're saved. If we're on our way to heaven, we uh, heaven's our home, and we have Jesus with <laughs> with us and to go with us every step of the way. There's no reason why we don't have joy in our lives. Well, we're going to look at uh, why we shouldn't, I should say. But there, we're going to look at four different things that, you know, it's like, well, you know, I don't have that joy. Maybe you've heard people say, well, I don't just, I just don't have that joy that I used to have. As we see, as we go through the, uh, the message, we're going to see uh, where they're kind of telling on themselves. And, there, and, and if we start feeling that way, we can uh, we'll look at four things that we can that we can check to see, you know, hey, is 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 this area slipping? Is you know maybe there's uh, a problem here? We're going to look look at those things. We're going to look at uh, as far as joy, having joy in our lives. There's 155 verses uh, that contain the word jo- contain the word joy in them. And it said that uh, variations of the word joy, uh, there's 170, 187 verses that contain a variant of joy. And we see that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, ex- uh, God expects us to be joyful. And we'll look at a few things that maybe are, are stealing our joy, that we're allowing to steal our joy. We see first, uh, the possession of the Spirit produces joy. The possession of the spirit, uh, you know, we we get uh, you won't have joy unless you're saved. You can't have real joy unless you're saved. Now the world will try to tell you uh, what you know. This will bring you joy, or you can have happiness if you do this, or hap, you know, joy if you do that, or you know, your your life will be better if you use this toothpaste, or whatever you know. Whatever they have, all these different reasons. And think, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> here's here's how you can be happy. Here's how you can have joy, uh, you know, in in different things. The world will try, but there's only one way to have true joy. 
you know, in, in, <laughs> is by uh, being saved. Have a time where you've asked the Lord to come into your heart and save you. And once we're saved, that Holy Spirit moves in. And, it, and the thing is, uh, you know, and, and I kind of, uh, as I was going over my notes uh, this afternoon and, and looking over, I thought, well, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, parallels to this morning's message. But the thing is, we, if we, if we want something that produces joy is uh, the possession of the Spirit. You know, as Christians, when we get saved, the Holy Spirit moves in. But the thing is, it, it all comes down to how much, uh, do, how much do we allow the Holy Spirit to have control of? You know, we're going to give him just a little part? Or are we going to give him just, uh, you know, uh, when, when we get saved, whatever little part he gets right then, you know, uh, do we just leave him there? Or do we let him have full control? That's where joy is. You know, the idea of, of uh, having possession of the Spirit brings joy, but, but does the Spirit have possession of you? We need to let him have control. Now, as I said this morning, the world, uh, you know, they, uh, they'll, they'll say, you know, well, well, if you live that Christian life, you know, it's not, you're, that's not going to be any fun at all. There's no, you know, there isn't any fun in that. And you know what? You need to, you might be saved, but you need to uh, keep, you need to keep doing this. You need to, uh, you know, one foot in, one foot out. But you know what? That, that's a lie of the devil that many Christians have, have believed. But the thing is, we need to let the spirit have control. We need to be filled with the Spirit and, and let the Spirit lead us and guide us. Now, you, you know, the, the old flesh is, they, the flesh wants to have control. Old self, you know, it wants to get in there and, and uh, you know, not give up that control of, you know. But uh, it, it isn't until we let the Holy Spirit have control will we have true joy. And the thing is, uh, those of you that uh, have had a desire to let the Holy Spirit take control, you know what I'm talking about. But the fact is, there are too many that haven't. They bought into the fact that, uh, you know what, <laughs> every, uh, letting the Holy Spirit take control means, you know, no more, no more enjoyment, no more fun. But like I said, there couldn't be anything farther from the truth. Not only does the possession of the Spirit produce joy, but you know what? The presence of the Lord produces joy also. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life in the presence of fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611 says, you know, the idea that we need to, uh, you know, in Wednesday night for the last, I said Wednesday night, 20, time, 20, 20 lessons, but I think it was, uh, we, Sam and I were going back and checking because on the, on the monitor it said 19. Well, Sam, Sam was right. So show up Wednesday night and you will get the, the actual 20th lesson. And uh, I, I had it written wrong on my paper. Uh, but <laughs> the, the last 19 Wednesdays, We've been we've been talking about different things that we can do uh, to to walk have a closer walk with the Lord, and that's what we're talking about. We have the uh, the presence of the Lord. You know, we need to. Uh, you know, you think like I said at the at the beginning. You know, think well. You know, I used to uh, I used to feel closer to Him. I used to uh, have that that joy. But I don't seem to have it anymore. You know, you're telling on yourself. You're telling on the fact that you're, you've, uh, you've, drawn, you've grown apart. You know, you know, too many people are trying to have that long-distance relationship with the Lord. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't work. I know it worked for Sam and Deanna, but that's, you know, but that's not, that's not, that's not how, it doesn't usually work very well. 
You know, we need, we, need to, we need to have a desire to walk closer with him. Be closer to him tomorrow than you were yesterday. And as you get closer to him, you know what? Uh, the, the joy of your salvation, will be, it'll be even greater. The, the, the joy that you have in your life, it'll, it'll be uh, sweeter as you walk with him. You know, that <laughs> you think of, uh, you know, maybe you spend time with, uh, with a friend. And you maybe, but you know, there's a difference between maybe friends and then like that good friend that when you spend time with it, they encourage you. They uplift you. You, you might have, have many that you call friends. But when I mention those kind of friends, you know, the, the ones that, are, that when you're around them, you know, you know what, you feel like you're better for being around them. You're, you, you, maybe you were down and they, they encouraged you. Or they help, they help uplift you or help you grow spiritually. I'd have to say probably every, uh, everyone that you call friend is not one of those friends. I'd have to say most people that you call friends, there's probably only a, maybe a few if you're lucky uh, in your life that, if you, that you call friends that are like that. But you know, those of us that are saved, we have a friend like that. And when we're in his presence, uh, we'll, that'll produce joy. When we spend time with the Lord and, 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 and uh, spend time getting to know him better in our Bible reading and talking to him in prayer and hearing sermons preached about him and we think about him and we spend time uh, telling him uh, that we love him, you know what? That'll cause joy to come into our lives. The presence of the Lord produces joy. And uh, we have that, that friend, the, 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 as we walk with him, we'll, we'll get more and more, we'll be more and more joyful. The more we spend time with him, the more we let him have control. But not only that, we see that protecting the heart produces joy. Protecting the heart produces joy our, our text verse be glad in the lord and rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart we need protect protecting of the heart produces joy you know the idea that we need to keep that short account with him 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And it cleanses from all unrighteousness. We need to keep that short account. Once again, one of those things that, uh, you know, is kind of a telltale. You know, if, you, if you're harboring that, that sin in your life and you think no one else knows it, you know what? God knows it. And that, 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 key, that starts breaking that fellowship that you have with him. No, you're not going to lose your salvation, but you are going to lose the fellowship. And you know what else? You're going to uh, not feel like uh, you're not going to have that joy that you used to have. You're not going to have that closeness that you used to have. But as we, guard, as we protect, uh, protecting of the heart produces joy. As we, as we keep that short account, and we try to have a desire to, to, to live for him and, and walk with him, it'll produce joy. Really, it's a decision. If you have uh, sin in your life or joy in your life. You say, well, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Two syllable word. Two single syllable word. One syllable word. And I'm thinking, is that so? And I'm thinking, no, that's vowels. You know, <laughs> anyhow. You can tell English wasn't my friend. And, uh, but uh, it, it, two short words, two three-letter words. You're going to choose sin or you're going to choose joy. Now, the world will tell you, well, the sin, you know, that's where the fun is. That's where the joy, you know, that's where you can have joy. But you know what? We can have, but that's not true. Because if you choose sin, you know, you might have fun for a while. But you know what? You're not going to have joy. 
You're not going to have that true joy in your life. We need to keep that short account with him. We'd be, uh, as the verse says, upright in heart. We think we can hide it. You know, <laughs> so many, uh, you know, seems like in, a, in, in, a, in churches, there are people that think, you know, they, they're involved in things that they ought not be involved in. And uh, for some reason, they think no one else can see it. But you know what? A lot of times, everyone, those around can't see it too. But even if you hide it well enough that no one else sees it, God still sees it. He still knows. And it's going to take that joy away. Once again, if you're saying, you know what, I, I just don't have the joy I used to have. Well, maybe you ought to check, check and see if, if there's sin in your life that needs to be taken care of. Then not only number four, planting of the seed produces joy. Planting of the seed. Psalm 126, verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Sharing the gospel. Carrying out the great commission. That'll bring joy. Many years ago, uh, we, <laughs> it, it, on, uh, I think we used to have Thursday night so morning. When we back when we started, thirty something years ago, and uh, there there was a fellow that uh, he was part of the church back then, and uh, him and his family, and and we go uh, <laughs> went out and and uh, I, I, quite often I'd go with him, uh, you know we'd go we'd get partnered up, go out and make visits. But it was at this the time that I was talking that I'm remembering it was. The part of the year where it's dark you know so you try to get <laughs> uh, visits together and things like that and we go out and, and uh i remember he said you know <laughs> going out you know you go out and sometimes you you have you know two or three visits and you know uh you go out and you knock and you don't find anyone at home it can be discouraging and it was one of those times where uh you know maybe we didn't uh you didn't find too many people at home with, with our visits and things like that. But, but he said, you know, uh, <laughs> I think he told when we got back, he was talking with dad. And he said, you know, uh, it just feels good doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. And you know what? That is true. We need to be busy planting the seed. Brother uh, Jerry Scott pre uh, came out and did a soul winning Clink with uh, on either one Wednesday night or two consecutive Wednesday nights, and uh, <laughs> the one thing that he said, Matt, he said, uh, "God pays by the hour, not by the piece." And I remember him saying that, and it was like, it was like, you know what, that, <laughs> you know, it was one of those uh, things, Sam, where, you know, you might sit and, and hear something, and you get one thing out of it, and you know what, that was, if I think hard enough, you know, I probably could come up with something else that he said, you know. Like the Romans Road, I'm sure that was in there, uh, but the the fact that <laughs> that he said that, and you know that that's true, and we need to remember that. We need to be just we need to be busy doing what we're supposed to be doing. What is it the Bible said? And God gives the increase, but we need to be planting the seed. And when we're out planting the seed and telling folks about him and, and handing out tracts and getting the, getting the gospel in people's hands, you know what? That, that brings its own joy. That brings a joy that, 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 that's, that the world has nothing to match it with. We need to realize the importance of, of getting the gospel out. And the fact that how that it's it's a, a part of the Great Commission, it's God's uh, what He's left us with. And it, as Sam said, I think it was this morning. You know, he he, he that's he, out of all the ways he could have, uh, you know, uh, given out that gift of salvation and told folks about that, uh, he uses us. And what a what a great responsibility that we have. 
And what an honor it is to get to share uh, <laughs> share that free gift of salvation and tell folks about him and how they can be saved. But on top of that, we, there's a joy that comes with it. And sure, it, it's exciting. There's nothing like it when you get to win someone to the Lord. But you know what? There's, a, there's still, a, even, even when you, maybe as they say, get skunked, there's still a joy of knowing that you're serving God and doing what he told you to do. We need to plant the seed. We need to p- protect our hearts and make sure that, uh, you know, we don't let sin come in and steal that joy. We need to make sure we let uh, the possession of the Spirit, make sure we let the Holy Spirit have control. And we need to be in the presence of the Lord. It'll produce joy also. The next time you start feeling like, you know what, I don't, uh, I just seem to have lost my joy. I don't, you know, I don't know what happened. Well, maybe these four things or something you had to check. What do you go take your car uh, to the shop and they, they plug in that little diagnostic gizmo and, and it tells them what's wrong. You know, sometimes uh, in our Christian life, maybe you say, well, you know, uh, I don't have that joy that I used to. Well, maybe we had to uh, take these four things and, and, and look, at our, look at our own heart, look at our lives and say, is there one of these four things that are causing me not, not to have the joy that I used to have? And if you, if you don't have that joy and you start uh, asking the Lord uh, to reveal to you what, what the problem is, and you start searching your heart and saying, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not letting the Holy Spirit have control. Or maybe I'm not, uh, you know, taking care of that sin. I'm letting sin fester in my life. Or uh, I'm, not, I'm not telling folks like I ought to. You know what? The, the Holy Spirit will convict you of it. He'll tell you. If you have that desire to get it straightened out and get the joy back that you once had. We can have joy in our Christian lives. God wants us to. But, you know, there's some things that we need to to be aware of. And if we're not careful, the devil will come in and steal that joy away. We'll just be uh, going through uh, life downhearted and and, and without any joy or or, uh, uh, any peace in our lives if we're not careful. But we can have joy.